Hi everyone, it's Nick Pavlov and I welcome you to our channel where we talk about Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. In this video, we'll pick up where we left off in our previous video and this time we'll look at the four counting functions. Count A, count, count rows and distinct count. Now first, let me create a separate folder for uh, these counting measures. All right, here I have it and let me select it and let's start with the count function first. I'm going to go ahead and create a new measure. This is going to be uh, the count function, right? The count function counts the number of rows in a column that have the numeric value. So let's calculate number of transactions uh, in my fact table. So we're going to use the, the count and that's going to be obviously sales amount, fact sales, sales amount. So I am counting the number of numeric rows in the column sales amount. There we have it. Let me add the measure, format it. This is the whole number. And so this function accounts the number of sales that have an amount recorded. How many actual transactions you had. All right, now let's take a look at count A. The next function count A counts the number of cells in a column that are not empty, regardless of a data type. So the count A will count numbers, text, or any other data type. Let me create a measure to calculate the number of products. Number of products, and that's going to be count A. And I am going to be using the product key uh, column from my product table. There we go. This measure will count how many products are in your database using the product key column in the product table. And so this can be very useful when entries might include both text or number values. For example, you have your product keys coming from different uh, tables and um, some of your IDs are, for example, numeric values and others are text. So to make sure that you're counting everything, you will use count A instead of just count. Because the difference between count A and count is that count A counts everything. And let me do the proper formatting. There we go. Okay. The next function is count rows. Count rows will count the total number of rows in the table. It doesn't focus on any specific column. It simply counts all rows in the selected table. So if I want to do total transactions again, right, that will be count rows. So again, I'm counting all the rows in my fact sales table. So everything is counted. Okay, let me count this. Uh, sorry, let me format this. If you have clean and accurate data, then obviously you will have the same number when using count or count rows. Obviously, the Contoso data set that I'm using right now is a demo data set. It, it, it's cleaned up, right? So that's why I'm seeing the same numbers of transactions. In some cases in real life, that may not be the case, right? So it depends. Now, the last function that we're going to take a look at today is distinct count. The distinct count function counts the number of unique values in a column. For example, uh, let's count the number of unique products that were sold over a year. So I'm going to do number of unique products sold. And it's going to be distinct count. And I am going to be using the product key from my fact sales table. Fact sales, product key. Okay, so what the distinct count does it counts each unique product key only once, even if multiple purchases were made. This can be useful for understanding how many unique products were sold. In my table right here, I can see that uh, in January, I sold 900 uh, distinct products. All right, so we have looked at four basic counting functions. These functions are powerful yet straightforward and allow you to summarize and analyze your data more effectively. I hope you liked this video. In the next video, we'll be diving a little bit deeper into DAX and looking at filter functions. Until then, take care of yourself and I will talk to you later. Thank you.